and I'm going to introduce my brother Patrick. I, actually, I won't say a lot because of the video that I'll share uh, about his experience, but uh, he began his coaching career here. We grew up on the east end of town. He went to Cotter. He ended up coaching at Cotter, one of his first uh, stints as a coach, and really traveled all over the U.S. North Park University prep school out in um, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, yes, Massachusetts, uh, North Park University in Chicago, Wabash Valley Junior College, and then again, you'll hear through the quick video that I'll show here. Uh, he ended up in Arizona where he's really launched a, a great career in training basketball players. But I'm kind of asking him to speak about the current landscape of youth sports and what it looks like, especially from a club standpoint. I know we, some of us have kids here who are involved in those programs. I think all these things have a place, but how can we kind of blend them together to have a great experience for our kids? So uh, he's had some recent success. One of his players got drafted the other night, Jalen Williams, who got drafted number 12 in Oklahoma City draft. So that was a pretty cool event for him to be a part of, and he'll share, share a little bit about that. Uh, we'll take a look at a quick video that they actually did about. This video is more about Jalen's brother Cody, who will be a senior next year, and is one of the top recruits in the country. So. Uh, but you'll see a little bit of the will kind of introduce himself in the video. Shout out to David Williams. Shout out to the first step. Uh, you want to get your first one? No, this is actually no. Hi, I'm um, Patrick O'Brien. I'm a trainer for Give and Go Hoops. I've been with Cody and Jalen for about the last seven years. I'm here 17 years ago when the Phoenix Suns drafted one of my players, a kid named Jackson Throwman. He was a, a second round pick who got traded from the Bulls to, to Phoenix. And uh, I stayed here, I, I came out here with him, and then about six months into, the, into being here, he got traded to Oklahoma, and I stayed out here. And then when he and a few other players came back into town, that's when this whole training thing started. It started with Amari Stoudemire, uh, Jared Bayless, Jay Foskell, Jackson Thorman, Nacho Plante, uh, Matt Carlino. Uh, there were a bunch of young players here at the time, and not much of a not much of a structured scene. Years ago, I can't remember, maybe, I think Cody was in sixth grade. We, uh, we decided that Game and Go wasn't going to be just training. That when we had the right group of kids, we were going to have youth teams. So uh, Todd Delano, Vincent Delano's father, put together a sixth grade team for Vincent, and Cody showed up. And after the first day, I went to Todd and told him, I think this is what it's like to get Tracy McGrady in sixth grade. <laughs> he started coming, he just started hanging around practices. There would be times when maybe there was a game going on and there'd be an extra court and I'd grab him and we'd start working out. And then eventually when he got his license, really it's when it happened, when he was able to drive from Chandler to come over here to Scottsdale for our workouts, that's when it really started. So I guess maybe he might have been a sophomore or junior maybe when we started with him. And then he and Cody hopped into the college pro group, which is the longest running uh, summer group in the state. We've been this going on our 17th year. He, you know, Jalen got invited his senior year going into his freshman year of college, and Cody just kind of stayed stuck in, and just missed, he just kept coming. And now he'll be one of the best members of our group that's loaded with, you know, probably 15, 20 pros.
he's getting a little faster, but kind of the same thing. You know, if I was kind of looking at him, he's shorter, he's, you know, he's good, he's this or that, and you know, now he's kind of receiving that, that glory as well. So I, I would just say our determination, you know, has to do this. Um, He'd always ask us, like, how do we want to be remembered? Like, what do we want our last name to represent? Like, when we go on the field and compete, so I thought that was kind of a cool piece. So, uh, Padre's going to come up. Uh, welcome him to the stage here. <laughs> Because it didn't, the other thing I don't really cross up here, but 
I mean, I think I, even just volleyball back home, you know, back where I'm from, it's, it's a three thousand dollars every three months kind of thing. You know, so it's it's a it, 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 it's a huge financial commitment. It's not lost on me that, that these parents have to make that commitment. But again, is that money gonna? You know, when the kids are thirty, you can give them that money. To, like, are they gonna be able to like, go recreate that experience that they maybe would have had if you go just some time for the club thing? But it absolutely, in my opinion, has to be a family thing. If, if everybody's not on board, you just you might as well just start your money on fire. I know Jeremy talked a little bit about it, but this family is the best time and money and resources. I mean, can you see athletes you work with? What's the likelihood that a kid is going to get a college scholarship? Again, the problem, the thing that's interesting is because a lot of kids, because they're in the club scene, they're around kids getting scholarships all the time, so they think it's normal, but it's not. It's not. Like even Jeremy's deal, Jeremy got, we took him to Future Stars. Nobody knew about Jeremy. We took him to Future Stars. At the time, Waldorf was a junior college. We thought this was just going to be a stopping off point for, for Jeremy, and they made it a four-year school while he was there. So that's really how it worked out for Jeremy. But yeah, the, the return uh, as far as being a scholar, as a scholar, you know, scholarship, super low. Especially because here's the other one that you'll, that you'll, you'll find maybe as, as things progress here, you'll have a kid who'll say, "Well, I'm D1 or bust." Well, I can I can tell you with 100% certainty that Damian played at Augustana. Augustana could go down to go down to California to play San Jose State, Sacramento, all those little tiny new ones and beat by a hundred. So the reality is you have to it's part of part of the job too is exposing these kids to the different level of competition and how good it really is as you know throughout the country. I definitely have conversations with some parents already just about uh, you know, when is club ball or when are some outside entities a good place to to resource and I think that's gonna be part of what we do is how can we build programs within, but also what groups can we partner with outside the community that will be positive, uh, shared value systems that our kids can go participate in as well. I'll, I'll understand too that the rest of the country, and most of the country, and I know you've got to Minneapolis because a couple of their teams came, to, came down to Phoenix during the pandemic, is that for most kids, as far as at least in the basketball world, it's 12 months called basketball. Most, there's a huge trend now, I hope it doesn't happen, but I can't imagine. In these, these smaller communities, one of the best parts of sports is being part of the high school scene. And it's really kind of sad now, like in, in Phoenix, there isn't a top, I don't know, other than my two kids are at, at high school, the rest of the top 50 kids in the state don't even play for high school. They just play for a club team year round. So it's kind of my next question is, uh, if some of your kids may have away from high school, can you maybe talk about how that high school experience is different than a club team? For sure. Like, so, so the, the Jalen's younger brother is Cody. Cody plays for high school, Perry High School. Perry had a kid, Dylan Anderson, who's at U of A this next year. Last year's team had Dylan Anderson, the seventh grader, going to U of A. And, uh, and they had Cody, who's going to be a pro. And they got a kid named Cole Peak, who's the best 16 year old on the planet that you've ever seen. That, for those three kids, the high school scene is awesome. They get, to walk, they get to walk down the hallways and be part of the community and, and the whole place is supporting them, right? It's, it's, it's so awesome. Like, I, I, I occasionally get invited by the coach to come by. And it's just, it's like it is here. You know, like if you're part of the basketball team, everybody kind of knows and they're supporting you. And there's really a sense of community, right? I have another kid, Vincent Delano, who has 15, 20 offers right now. And he's been, he's been to one high school. Transferred out of there. He now plays for a program called Phoenix Prep. Their whole academic, uh, all their academics are online, and he doesn't get to go. He doesn't get to come out to a band, you know, playing against Russia. We keep talking about Russia, <laughs> 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 but you know that experience. Of, and, 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 you know, like when you go to a, like something in Chandler, and the, it's one of the biggest, like Perry High School, is a huge high school. Not one day when they bring the band. Not like not one day when, when the choir is there singing the singing the national anthem, you know, all those things that just you don't appreciate until you're not around anymore. Like, hey, these kids just aren't gonna, they're not gonna get that. So you made a life of a business out of training people, but uh, can you maybe speak to like kids not just in structure but on structure play, like at playing pickup basketball? Maybe. Okay, so I know Jerry mentioned money too, and I'm, I'm gonna mention it just because we'll put it in perspective, right? There are there are kids that in Phoenix who pay me 
$150, an hour for training. And I, I'm not super grateful that they're willing to do that. But the most important thing, honestly, and something we had at Cotter, because they're lighting all the buddies for about the right age, and they were coming up, is nobody plays pickup basketball again. Okay? It blows my mind. It's, it's the most important thing for these kids. And it's free for the most part, and they don't do it. And so the unstructured is equally, I mean, honestly, maybe in this generation, maybe more important. Because it, it's not going to be hard. I don't know. Like, I know, like, Mitch Johnson, if you remember him from Fairville, he's a, he does what I do in Minneapolis. So there's a huge market for him there. And, and maybe there's somebody here who's doing the same thing. But it's not the end of the world if you don't have it. You've got Mike, you've got Matt, you've got so many people around here. If I'm being honest, Jalen Williams, his game, 50% Mike Costello. You know, like what I taught him is stuff that I saw him doing, the stuff that I watched my brother do. You know, that's when no one created him. And that's one thing too, just kind of, but everybody, you always hear this thing, well, I'm just a kid from so and so. Everybody's just a kid from so and so. You know, Jeremy and I are just two kids from Winona, and we're, we're in Scottsdale doing, you know, doing what we're doing. It, like, it doesn't matter, like, being from a small town is, in my opinion, a huge advantage. You know, rather than being, you know, you don't get lost in the crowd, you get to come back and do stuff like this, but there's a lot, there's something cool about all of it. I know we're talking fairly, uh, a lot about basketball, and Mr. Uh, Kluge is running some open gyms on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I think, you know, as parents, we often structure our lives for our kids, like, go here, go here, go here, we drop them off to the next place, to the next place. But the importance of free play, especially for young kids, is so important, right? They, I know one of the things they talk about now is that European basketball players, they're much more expressive in their play because they do free play more. And so I really encourage, especially if we have young kids, to look at just pushing them outside and just getting involved in playing, and not just the physical skills that they develop, but also just the social things and the interactions that are important to learn. Uh, I'll just add one more thing. Like, and not the things that, as far as I know, things that Cotter has overall have been, been great, you know, kids' experiences, right? But if, if the parents don't buy into this thing, you know, it's 10 years from now, I'm going to be coming back into the same thought. Because if the, parent, if the parents don't buy in, I mean, we know, like, there's certain, there's a culture here in my right? I, I remember it. I, it's still a lot of that's here, right? And if, if we don't, there is a, my mom would love this, there's a paradigm shift. You know, it's, it's gonna, it's just gonna be the same, and and maybe the same is okay. Maybe there's a bunch of people here who are like, you know what, I like what's going on. But if your kids are going all out for this thing at, at, at 19 or eight, 17, 18 years old, like, all they have to really go all out for is sports. So why not provide the opportunity, right, and, and see where it takes them? Uh, if you have a question about the club sports and some of the environment, but we'll have a question and answer towards the end. But I don't know one of the takeaways that I'm gonna present to the kids is like. Not just the sport, but are the habits you have today on par with the dream you have for tomorrow, right? Your life is about habits. Who you are now is a result of the habits, the habits I've created. So how can we instill in the kids, right? Where do you want to go? What are you doing today to get to that point? Right? These habits are going to be really important. So uh, we'll be back up later with questions. Thank you much.